everybody loves hitting nicks, right? As you can see, I love it too. And in fact, it's probably one of the most practiced type of shots ever. Now there are three things that can happen when you aim for a nick. Number one, the ball hits the front wall, then the side wall, and comes back towards the middle. Now as long as you don't hit the ball too hard and the ball doesn't hit the side wall too high, it's a good shot. But as I just mentioned, the ball does come back into the middle of the court. And what's really important in this type of shot is the second bounce. Let's go back and have a look at the three forehand nicks that I played. What we want to notice is exactly where the second bounce is. And actually, it's not very good. It's quite far back. Our opponent would have a good chance of getting these shots. The second type of shot is the ball hits the front wall and then bounces before it gets to the side wall. Notice the second bounce. See how it's going away from me and is close to the side wall. Now this is best played low and quite soft. The advantage of this type of shot is that the ball is moving towards the side wall. So that makes it difficult for the opponent because they get a little bit hesitant or nervous. In fact, it's more or less a second bounce in the nick type of shot. And the third type of shot is the best, and it's called the roller. And that's basically when the ball hits in the perfect position against the sidewall and the floor and rolls. If there is a bounce, it's not really a roller. Some courts seem to make it difficult to hit perfect rollers. Now the wall and the floor should be at a perfect 90 degrees, but there's always going to be some variation. And even a small variation might make it difficult to hit that perfect roller. I'm sure that's why you haven't hit any in a long time. When hitting nicks, the lower you make contact with the ball, the softer you need to hit it. The higher you make contact with the ball, the harder you can hit it. Now I say can, because that doesn't necessarily mean that just because you're making contact higher, you should hit it as hard as you can. If you're confident and the ball does go into the nick, great job. But if it doesn't, it hits the side wall too high, it will bounce and it will come back straight to your opponent. So be careful when hitting hard nicks. The closer you make contact with the ball to the middle of the court, the more to the left on the front wall the ball should hit. The closer you make contact to the side wall with the ball, the closer it should hit on the front wall. That all sounds fine in principle, so let's look at it in practice. Here, you can see me about to hit a forehand nick. The first thing to notice is that I am not looking at the ball hit my strings. <clears throat> Naughty me. Anyway. As you can see, I'm making contact with the ball on the left side of the court. The point of contact with the front wall is about a racket length away from the side wall. It's not a great nick, and it would have been better if I'd have hit it slightly to the left of where it did hit. Now, let's look at another forehand, but this time, the point of contact is much closer to the right side wall. Notice that where it hits the front wall is also closer to the side wall. This is the general idea that I want you to understand. It's important to note that the front wall point of contact depends on how hard you hit the ball and how high the ball is when you hit it. Now that's really just a guide and there is no substitute for getting on court and practicing lots and lots of nicks. And over time you'll develop the ability to judge the angle that you need to hit it, the height, where you should be making contact. So really it's just a case of practice but consciously thinking about what changes you need to make each time you hit the ball. So all of that leads us on to the title of this video, the real question, how good are your nicks? And 
The other question it asks is, is there a way to measure them? Well, yes, there is. And I'm going to be using two, uh, two uh, boxed balls and a racket. And I'm gonna be calling this the Nick Tester. So let's take those two boxed balls and the racket and place them on the court. And then we're gonna try and hit some nicks. Now you might need to adjust the position, but look where, more or less where I'm putting mine and you put yours in a similar position. I have to admit that it's a pain in the neck because too often the ball hits the racket and you have to reset the racket on the boxes. As you get better, move the nick tester closer to the side wall and the front wall. It will take some practice to understand the correct placement, but that is all part of the learning process. It will teach you exactly where your nick shots come back to. If you want to, you can use two boxes on each side to make it a little bit easier but ideally you just want to use one box. How you feed yourself and what type of nick you try to hit, for example, a cross court, a straight nick, a volley, off the bounce, is up to you. It's important to note that you should only use the nick tester every 10th training session or so. It's a measuring tool, not so much a training tool. To use it every time would be frustrating. All right, enough silliness. The concept is clear. The closer you can put your nick tester to the wall, the better your quality nicks. I challenge you to put your nick tester one racket length away from the wall and hit three consecutive shots that go under the nick tester. I couldn't do it, but then again, you're probably better than me. While it's best to use the nick tester at the front of the court, you could use it in the back. And here's a, a sort of a view of me looking for cross court shots. And it's the same idea that if you can get the ball to roll underneath the nick tester, you've done a good job. Now I've put it in the middle of the court in the half court line, but again, the closer you can get that um, nick tester to the side wall, the better the quality cross courts that you're hitting. If you use the nick tester, please let me know in the comments, especially on that challenge about three rollers underneath one width away from the wall. Love to hear it. Uh, thanks for watching. And as always, do something every single day, every single day to improve your squash. See ya.